his arm with another strikeout. To the plate, not in time. Oh, Jerry Sands delivers the two-out RBI single. Swung on and missed. Well, it all comes down to this. Josh Donaldson and Cody Allen. Did he go? He did, and the game is over. Well, it was a thriller last night here at the Rogers Center, and now we're ready for round two. Let's go downstairs and welcome in Andre Nott, who has more on tonight's Blue Jays starting pitcher, Marco Estrada. Yes, Marco Estrada's coming off a loss versus Texas, but he's a guy for Toronto that's really held together their rotation at different times during the season. Talking to Terry Francona, he says the thing about him, he's young, but he understands how to locate his fastball away from hitters. And then the key to all of it with him when it comes to Estrada, he's got one of the best changeups they feel like they'll see the rest of the season. Season. They said it comes out of his arm, looks like the fastball, but it never gets to the plate. It's not one of those, Rick, that drops, they said, but it's one of those that makes you wait, 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 and before you can, you end up swinging and missing it. Well, he doesn't have a power fastball. He's not an overpowering guy. That's about it. But that change of pace can definitely keep hitters off balance. Let's take a look at Terry's starting lineup tonight, brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Jason Kipnis will lead it off. He'll DH tonight. Francisco Lindor batting second, batted 370 in the month of August. Michael Brantley is third. Carlos Santana riding an eight game tear is hitting cleanup. Then it's Lonnie Chisnell, Jan Gomes, Abraham Almonte, Giovanni Urshela, and Jose Ramirez. And uh, tonight's Northern Ohio Honda dealer starting pitcher, Marco Estrada, making his 22nd start of the year. Uh, he is 11 and 8. 319 earned run average. This is his very first start against the Indians. Now, this guy, you talk about his fastball. He's been pitching up in the zone a little bit more because Navarro is his personal catcher. He goes out there and catches every start. So here they're talking him into elevating the fastball, and he's got a good curveball and that changeup to go with it. We'll see how he tries to work over the Indian hitters tonight. These two teams coming off excellent months of baseball. The Indians went 16 and 12 in August. One win shy of their best month this year. They were 17 and 12 back in May. The Blue Jays went 21 and 6 in the month of August, surging to the top of the standings in the AL East. Estrada's first pitch, a fastball right down Broadway for strike one. And as you saw on the radar readout, 89 miles an hour. Curveball misses outside. Deanna Navarro, the Blue Jays catcher, has done a tremendous job working Estrada through games, making him use all of his pitches. The 1-1. One -one. There's, There's a high, high fastball. Yeah, that's where he's been throwing it. Up there. And, and now you have to see if the umpire is going to call it Jerry Meals. It was about belt high, maybe a hair above it. And it, there's the call. That that's the high part of the strike zone. So if he pitches up there, he can be effective with his off-speed pitches. And that one-two fastball is hit pretty well deep to left. Back goes Revere, and he'll make the catch. Let's check out the Jays' defense, and it's brought to you by Ram. In the outfield, it was Revere making that play in left. Pilar's in center, Bautista over and right. Donaldson at third, Tulowitzki at short. Goins is at second. Smoke gets the start at first tonight. And behind the plate, Deonor Navarro. Crew chief Jerry Meals has the plate tonight. Andy Fletcher is at first. Clint Fagan at second. Paul Emmel down at third. Francisco Lindor. Swings at the first pitch and it's fouled back. Lindor batted 370 in the month of August, scored 18 runs, drove in a dozen in 28 games played. He played in every game. Just missed inside, one and one. Got in on him, fouled it back. A ball in two strikes. Certainly no coincidence that the Indians have played better since Lindor's arrival. He's had a very positive impact on this team. Pops this one in the air to left center. Revere again calling for it, and the left fielder has it. Two away. 
our window systems game time temperature tonight. It's only 73 degrees, but very humid as you see 83%. So it doesn't feel like a typical 73 degree game time start. No, it does not. Up comes Michael Brantley. You know, last night's game also shows you how far this team has come in a very short time. I don't know that the Indians could have won a game earlier this year when Michael Brantley and Jason Kipnis combined to go one for eight. You throw in Francisco Lindor, who was 0 for 4 last night, so the top three hitters just one for 12, and yet they still found a way to get the win. Three fly ball outs. The Indians go one, two, three. The Blue Jays are coming to bat. Bottom of the first here at the Rogers Center in Toronto. Take a look at the Blue Jays starting lineup for manager John Gibbons. It's brought to you by Toyota. Ben Revere leading it off, followed by Josh Donaldson. Jose Batista batting third. Then it's Edwin Encarnacion. Troy Tulowitzki, Justin Smokin at first base batting sixth. Deanna Navarro, the catcher, bat seventh. Kevin Pillar, Ryan Goins round it out. And Cody Anderson is our Northern Ohio Honda dealer starting pitcher tonight. 24 year old making his 10th career start his very first against the the Blue Jays in his last start went four and a third on a limited pitch count. He was just coming off the disabled list went four and a third gave up a couple of hits and a couple of runs left leading five to one but did not get a decision but he didn't pitch five. First pitch strike to Ben Revere who went two for five last night with a run scored. Ground ball to first. Santana backing up. Flip to Anderson who beats him to the bag for out number one. Let's go to that Indians defense that's playing behind Cody Anderson tonight. Brought to you by Ram. Brantley, Almonte, and Chisenhall in the outfield. Urshela is at third. Lindor at short. Ramirez gets the start at second tonight. Santana is at first. Gomes catching. Josh Donaldson. In his last 29 games, batting 349. And in those 29 games, 40 runs batted in. He's still the only player in all of baseball with at least 100 runs batted in. He's a 108. Well, he's having a, a, just one of those years, a career year. Everything you can see, he's picking it up in the second half. He's really 
lengthen this lineup up coming over here. Smash to left. First hit of the game, a one out base runner for the Blue Jays. Our keys to the game are brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Silence the crowd early. They had over 40,000 here last night and they were jumping. 46,000. 14 straight sellouts for the Blue Jays. And for Cody Anderson, keep him honest inside. Well, when you go up against this lineup, you have to throw everything you have at them. You know, I understandable where you may end up throwing a few more pitches. You don't want to leave anything on the plate, per se. It's a lineup where if you make mistakes, they will jump on you. Fouled by Batista almost out of self defense. That ball was really bearing in on him, and Jan Gomes going out. I don't know if he was crossed up. Well, What's just happening? watch this ball take off. He wants it away, and that ball comes inside. I, I love the pitch, to be honest with you. They wanted that ball down and away, and you know, maybe he's amped up and he overthrows it a little bit and it took off inside. At least it makes him conscious. Talk, we talked about it last night with these type of hitters Donaldson Bautista Encarnacion they're powerful enough in this ballpark because the ball carries to take it out in right field So if you give them swinging room out there They can stay back on it and they look for breaking balls to shoot that way So you can't be afraid you get runners on base. They may look in and try and turn Swung out a nice missed. change. Boy, up. was that a good change of pace? Did you see how far out in front sure. of was? well uh, They've never faced him before so they really don't know what the change up will be like he was geared fastball and he saw it coming all the way and he almost broke his back swinging. <laughs> no one two. See, that's, a, that's the thing about Anderson he doesn't have a, a, a big breaking ball or something to take him off so he's going to really have to command his fastball. His change up and I know he does have a breaking ball in there. He's going to have to show it to these guys and if you have to go ahead don't be afraid to bounce. it. Cody Anderson began the year pitching at double A. The Dave Wallace and the Akron rubber ducks and now he finds himself on September 1st pitching in one of the biggest games of the year to this point. One two fair inside the bag. Brantley will play off the sidewall. Donaldson will get to third, but Batista is held to a long single. So the good news for Anderson is he keeps the double play in order thanks to a terrific play by Brantley in left field. Yeah, Brantley made the play right there. He wasn't going to get Donaldson at third base. And there's the changeup. He showed him the first time and he was way out front. And look what happened the second time he saw it. He roped it down the third baseline. Brantley a heads up play keep the double play in order. He thought he had a double and then he picks up Brantley and has to stop. Well here is Edwin Encarnacion. This lineup just seems to get tougher as you go. He has hit now in a career best 26 consecutive games. And he's not just getting one hit a night. He's batting 412 during his hitting streak. That's just foul third base side. During his 26 game hitting streak, he has 23 extra base hits. Last night he had a double. Going two for four. Right now Cody Anderson trying to induce him to hit a ground ball right at one of his middle infield. That would be nice. And instead he drives one to center. That'll get the run home from third as Almonte settles under it. And there are two down. Coming home to score is Josh Donaldson. And the Blue Jays take the lead. RBI number 92 for Encarnacion. 
Now, the Toronto leads the league in that department. Sacrifice flies. That's their 49th. And they will play from in front tonight. Troy Tulowitzki. Tulowitzki had a hit in three trips last night. It was a double. But he's a guy who is still adjusting to a new league. Right. And even with interleague play, he hasn't seen a lot of these pitchers. And he's also learning something as he goes around for the first time, taking a look at our Levin Furniture player profile on Chulowitzki. And it was expressed to me that, you know, he hasn't ever played in the American League East. And they said that the difference when you play in the East is that because there are so many deep lineups, Toronto, New York, Baltimore, usually Boston, pitchers mentally get geared for the grind. You've got to really work hard. So, that, you know, pitching's a little different when you face the guys in the division. So for Tulowitzki, it's all a learning process. And it's not easy to do when you come over in the middle of a year. I don't care how long you've been around the game. Different environment. He's going where he was the man in Colorado for years. And looking at the color surrounding you, purple, you know, the, you know, with Colorado. Yeah. And you come to a totally uh, new team, different country coming up here. So it, it's not an easy thing to do. But he will adjust. He fits in nicely. We all, he also he doesn't have to be the man anymore either. No, that's true. Go to pitch. Swung out and missed. Anderson strikes him out to end the inning. Blue Jays get on the board first. They lead it one to nothing after an inning. Catch Indians baseball with MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. You can stay connected with live radio broadcast stats, breaking news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Carlos Santana, Lonnie Chisinau, Jan Gomes, due for Cleveland here in the second. Swings at the first pitch, following it out of play. Missed inside, evens the count. 
That's a pitch he's been working on as well. That little cutter into left handers. He didn't have a pitch starting this year where he could pitch any left handers inside. So he's been working on that cutter right there at about 87. Got in on him, but it's going to maybe drop. It will just be out of the reach of a diving Ryan Goins. How well, about that? That's a second, effort. Second time in a week he's placed it like that. He did it against the mm -hmm. Angels too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One time where it just yep. floated in there, got in on him. And they weren't playing him deep enough. But Is that boy, that cutter again? Yeah, might have been. I, I'm not sure if it was a four seamer, but it was something inside that jammed him. And look how far Goins goes to try and make that play. Not going to get there. First hit for the Indians is a Santana single. Now this is a new turf that they installed before the season, so it's a little spongier, might have a little more give, but that still looked painful when he laid out on this. Yeah, anytime you, you dive, whether it's grass or not, it doesn't feel very good. That hit for Santana extends his hitting streak to nine games. And now Lonnie Chisholm, who had a hit in his only trip to the plate last night. Lonnie in his 25 games that he's played since getting called back up from the minors, hitting 405. Pops this one foul, and that'll get into the seats. One ball, one strike. The Indians have won six straight, matching their longest win streak of the season. And five of those six have been come from behind wins. So the fact that they fall behind early, really not as great a consequence as it may have been earlier in the right. season. Well, they've responded a lot of times, too, when people have been able to go out and score. Estrada delivers, and Chisholm Hall pops it to right. Over near the line. In the foul territory, what a play by Goins. He didn't get the last one, but boy, did he make up for it there. And you look at the ground that he covered right there. That had to be well over 100 feet. And I mean, he was on a dead sprint with his back to the uh, plate and to the infield. Look at he started at double play depth. And I guarantee you, he went 120 feet to catch that ball. That is a terrific play, and he catches it on the slide. You see all the rubber that's yeah. coming up from that turf. And boy, that's a beautiful play right there. A lot of ground cover. So with one out, here's Jan Gomes. Out of play to the right. Gomes one for four last night with a run scored. Last night, Jan singled in the ninth inning and then came around to score on the base hit by Lonnie Chisnell, the ball that glanced off the glove of Donaldson. And Gomes scored when Donaldson tried to make up for it with a poor throw. He threw it into the dugout. Ran it up high, one and two. Right now, the first time through Estrada looks like he's going to more fastballs, although he's only throwing 88, 89 right now. Will he still use the changeup against right handed hitters? Oh, yeah. He'll, he'll use it. But you know what? He's, he's never faced the Indians before, so that first time you go through the lineup, that might have been just a fastball or a cutter. That was a pitch that right handers used to not throw against right handed hitters, but we've seen more and more guys oh, do it now. The, the Tiger staff throws the changeups always to right handers. That's that's a thing of the past. Yeah. You know, that's a that's a thing that's gone by the wayside. If you've got a pitch and you can throw it, it that's fine. You go ahead. And it's a comfort. The one two and Combs goes down swinging. That was a changeup. And he threw it inside. And it was only 76 miles an hour. So take a look. You see, you, you see it, and it's got the same arm speed. But you look at the movement going down and in. 
He was away with the 88, 88 away. He threw the, the 80 something cutter and he went down and it was a 76 mile hour changeup. So there's your there's the answer to your question. Yes, he, he can, will he throw it to the right handers. <laughs> well, it's been a difference maker of a pitch for him. The fact that he's been able to develop it and continue to get it get better at throwing it. There's another one. Strike one to Abraham well, Almonte. What is this guy? Dead red hitter. He loves a fastball, so he's not going to throw him an 88 mile an hour fastball. He starts him off with the, the off speed pitch, the changeup. You know, the Jays are only 11 and 10 in Estrada's starts. He came, uh, he started the year in the bullpen. Well, when he first began as a professional pitcher, Estrada was a fastball curveball. He didn't have a change. Uh -huh. It wasn't until a couple of years in that one of his minor league pitching coaches suggested that he add it to his combination, and he continued to work on it. Tinkered with a few different grips and then finally got to a comfort level with it. Chopper to second base, and the inning is over. Tribe gets a leadoff single, but a great defensive play helps short circuit the tribe here in the second. Blue Jays with a one to nothing lead. Bottom of the second inning. For Toronto, Justin Smoke, Deanna Navarro, and Kevin Pilar. Six, seven, and eight in the lineup. Do up. Smoke a switch hitter, but the Indians play him from the left side as a dead pull hitter. Hits right into the ship. Wow, they were dead right too. Ramirez throws it out and one away. Let's go down to Andre Knott for more on Cody Anderson. You know, I talked to Jerry Francona before the game. He says there's no pitch restriction on Cody Anderson. He goes, I just want him to get in the game and get comfortable and get back to being the guy he was before the All-Star break. They said he feels good with the oblique, and then he says, look. He may need a third pitch tonight, but we know that's the pitch that he's still working on. So he told him to do the best you have with your fast and change and go with that. Yeah, you got to show a good lineup, maybe your third pitch. That's why I said if you have it, you can go ahead and maybe bounce the breaking ball. But you have to show it to him. Fastball in there for a strike. The honor Navarro, 221 average on the year.
Navarro was on the DL. Missed 38 games with a left hamstring injury from late April until early June. So he missed a big chunk of the season. And right back to the mound. Nice play by Anderson. Much like Jan Gomes almost threw it away. You lose that chunk when you're trying to get your timing and then you feel like you're playing catch up the rest of the year. Yeah. What did he do? He's up on that throw. Yeah. He made a nice catch. You know, a lot of pitchers, you see a lot of pitchers do that. They ease up and even though it's 10 feet, you know, you, even, you still have to throw the baseball. Well, we saw Brian Shaw do it last night. You know, he just sort yeah. of tried to flip it over there. And you know, that's why I think you see a lot of pitchers when they get ground balls, they start running the first base and underhand. Yeah. Because of the flip. You know, they just there's feel better. Like you yeah, the arm slot. It. They don't know. You just it takes a little flip. Kevin Pilar, one for four last night. To Urshela. And quickly go the Blue Jays. One, two, three. After two, it's Toronto one. Cleveland nothing. Grab some friends and catch a ball game at the popular corner bar open to all fans of Progressive Field. $13 district tickets presented by Sports Time Ohio are a big seller. They go quickly, so get yours today. And boy, we are looking forward to a huge home stand in the month of September. The tribe will have a three team stand against the Tigers, Royals, and White Sox. And then after. Their last road trip of the year, they'll finish the season at home against the Twins yeah. and the Red Sox. Yeah, our longest homestand of the year coming up when we get off this road trip. We still I think we're tied with the Yankees as far as playing the fewest amount of home games. And we'll continue on after tonight with seven more. Giovanni Urshela had the night off last night. Takes another ball out of the zone. It's two and zero. Oh. Gio's got himself a fan club here in Toronto. That's out of play to the right. He does. His first, what's it, his first trip here, and he's got a fan club. I'll tell you what, the way he plays third base, he'll have fan clubs in a lot of different places. Gio, there you go. Now the 2 1. Slowly chopped to short. Tulowitzki flips it over. 
One down. Our stat of the game brought to you by Buick. Under Terry Francona, the Indians have an uncanny ability to hit the gas when it matters most. Look at their record under August and September under Francona. And they have picked it up this month or last month and now going into September. Can they can they do it again? Can they back it up with another solid month? Put themselves in a position to be in the postseason. They're fighting for a wild card spot. The Indians began the day just four games out of the wild card spot. Ramirez to left. That goes Revere. Now he slams on the brakes and comes in a few. Yeah, to him. To realize who hit that ball off the left. Let's get on to Andre with more on the, the tribe's charge under Tito. You know, Tito says, look, I try to be the same guy from the beginning of spring training through the rest of the season. And he says that he thinks that's what helps the team play well late in the year. But to him, the thing that he likes right now, he says, look, we're fielding the ball. We're catching the ball, throwing it where it's supposed to go. Our pitching's been good all year. And he goes, you get a couple more runs a game. He goes, things turn out well. But he goes, I just try to be the same guy. That's why I think this is working the way it works. Well, Andre, you've been around a lot of coaches in different sports. Rick, you've been around a lot of managers. At the end of the day, it's the players. I think everybody understands that. But where, where Tito's impact on a ball club can be is that when things are maybe at their worst, that's when he's at his best, right. working yeah. that locker room, telling those guys, making them believe in themselves. So don't underestimate his ability to, to have an impact on how this club plays. And when they're playing well, and, you know, as, as Andre said, he keeps them loose, keeps it light. We showed you some numbers in, in the open. They're averaging a run more a game in the month of August, and that's why they're winning more. They're getting some timely hits. They're hitting with two outs. They are playing better defense. The pitching, the starters have been good. It's been uh, it's been things that you have to do to win games. High pop to center. Pilar runs it down. The Indians are retired in order. We'll go to the bottom of the third. It's still Toronto one, Cleveland nothing. Well, as you enjoy a cold one tonight, stay tuned later in the game for Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Humid night in Toronto. Blue Jays with a run on the first, lead it one to nothing. Number nine hitter Ryan Goins will lead it off here in the third, and Cody Anderson misses inside for ball one. Since giving up the back-to-back -back singles in the first. Cody Anderson has retired five straight. And he pulls that one foul. Does Goins one and one. Pilar and Goins—they are the guys that 
in many ways make the Blue Jays go because when they get on base they tend to score a lot of runs last night Bar and Goins combined to go three for eight with a run scored. It's easier said than done though when you say well keep those guys off the bases because this lineup wears yeah. you down as yeah. a pitcher you get to the bottom and you may think who I can take a break you here. No, you and can't then have boom. a let up. Yep. That's what good lineups do. It gets those guys down at the bottom part seven eight nine where a lot of times you'll get a breather from a, a, a lineup. The next thing you know you, they're on base and you're going oh my goodness that's how Donaldson has 108 RBI somebody's got to get on for him it's not the leadoff man every day 3 1 bullseye outside corner perfect pitch not one goings wanted to swing at 3 1 and it makes it a full count. Just missed outside ball four. Injury report that I brought to you by the injury lawyers. And Elk and Elk, Mark Teixeira, you have to wonder if he's going to play again. If he's going to miss at least another two weeks, that bone bruise is either worse than they're letting on or it's a really really bad bone there's got to be something else wrong you know you don't say a bone bruise and he's been out for what three weeks now he he started one game in three weeks yeah. I mean they, he wasn't on the DL but I mean right come on now and he's obviously an important we, look we went into New York we watched the four game series the Indians played great. Deservedly so, one three out of four. The Yankees lineup's not quite the same well, without the share. When we it. were talking about MVP candidates, his name was in the top five that we were That's talking right. about yeah. because he was having that kind of year. Yeah. He had 31, and uh, what do you have? 70 some of ribbies. He was right there and hasn't played since. Didn't play. Lead off man aboard for Toronto here in the third. Ben Revere, the batter. Line drive, base hit, right field. Goins hits second, heads to third, and the throw not in time. Aggressive base running by Goins, but more importantly, good read. He read it that it wasn't hit hard, but it was placed perfectly, and he knew he was going to be able to get to third because Chisholm had come a long way in to get it. Yeah, that, that's right. And, and I think uh, this was a changeup. It's uh, held deep. Yeah, high change up, middle of the plate. And he heard it. He knew it was off the end of the bat. Watch him. He was off and running. Just in all, I like what he did. He still came in and made it a throw, but he kept the ball down to where the guy at first base couldn't get a read on it and go to second. So this is what you have to do. Every throw. If you have to throw it and make a mistake, make it down. I like it. All right, first and third, nobody out. So now Cody Anderson with his work cut out for him. A chance of MVP rained down for Josh Donaldson, who singled and scored in the first. Foul back. He bunts. Thank you. Watch. Anderson looks the runner back to third. Nice. Throws to first, and Donaldson retired. Wow, is Thank that you. a surprise? Thank you very much. Now, I don't know if they're going to give him a sacrifice because the guy went from first to second. I think he was just trying to catch him by surprise and trying uh, to push him. He by. had to, but it, I'll tell you what, it shocked everybody in this ballpark. Look where everybody's playing. Santana had to hold him on. He was trying to get it past Cody Anderson. Cody did the right thing to turn around. Because Goins was starting to cheat down the line, but I, I'll tell you what, they give him a sacrifice. But I say, what are you doing there? Like, you got 108 ribbies. Drive him in. It's a head scratcher. That really is.
Batista looks and it just misses for ball one. He's got a base open and Edwin Encarnacion on deck. Not exactly an ideal situation right here for Cody Anderson. After the gift of Donaldson Bunny. Hammered down the line. Foul ball. Fans thought maybe it would be a, a quick three pointer. And he, he scorched it, but it was just to the left of the foul screen. Well, he didn't miss. That got out of here, and it was just left of the pole. He had the green light, 3-0, like all these guys will have. And he's trying to give it a little body English. No siree. I'll tell you what, he he rivals Ichiro in terms of stretching on the field. Oh, yeah. And he's at the plate. He's stretching up, down, sideways, backwards. I watched him run the bases last night. He got into third base. He stood up. He went down in the deep knee bend stretching, back bends. I know it. Perpetual motion. I don't know what he was talking to him. No, about he was that. thinking about maybe asking him to take a look at it, but it was clearly foul. Oh, and I think smokes. everybody saw it. But if you're John Gibbons down on the dugout, you probably that's, can't see it that clearly. No, I guess not. Now the three-one, swinging again and fouling it out of play. And the payoff pitch is hit to left. Brantley on the move. He'll make the catch. Goins will tag and score. And Toronto's lead is two to nothing as Batista picks up RBI number 89. Now it's been a pair of sacrifice flies. AT&T U vs. Rewind. Edwin Encarnacion. Against Detroit had a day to remember a two run homer a three run homer and a grand slam. Then he came back the next day hit a home run his first time up. They gave him the hat trick yeah, the hockey know. hat trick salute. Oh he hit the three Canada. home runs. That's beautiful only in Canada. Yeah he had nine RBIs at uh, tied Roy Howell who had nine RBIs. Kia in the driver's seat shows you that during his 26 game hitting streak, he's batting 412. He's sneaking up on Sean Green, who hit in 28 straight back well, in 1999. And that, that Mickey has to go out and talk to be very careful here. There's first base open. You don't have to give him anything to hit. As hot as this guy is, don't let him hurt you. You know, if worse comes worse, walk him. 
Let him go to first base. Deal with the next one. Pitch is low, ball one. I often wonder, just from a psyche standpoint, in an athlete's mind, if you put if you put doubt in there, create doubt, isn't he better off just intentionally walking? No, not really. I mean, this guy, I mean, Cody's young, but you got to go out there and you got to try and make, you got to compete in this at bat. Good change up, and he's over the top one on one. Go out there and give it your best you have, and if you walk him, that's no big deal. You're going to have to go back and get the next guy. But there, that's where I wanted to see the change up to Bautista 3-2. Was down. He left it up and he got the sacrifice fly. You know, and if he would have walked Bautista, then you would have had to deal with this guy. It would have been a very tough situation. But the thing oh, you learn, man. you have to learn as a young pitcher, you can't be afraid. If you walk him, you don't ever give in. Good pitchers never give in. The two one. There you Just go. He's, outside. See that? He's doing it the right way. He's going out there and trying to make the absolute perfect pitch, and if not, you walk him. I, I, that's the way to do it. He's not giving him anything to swing at. If he wants to swing, make him swing at your pitch. Here comes the problem. Maybe another three one change up down, but just get it down. Good. I, I like that. That's, you walk him so well. Now you've got to deal with uh, Tulowitzki. Two on, two out. Tulowitzki, the batter, struck out his only time off. And a strike call. Troy Chilowitzki with two on and two out here in the third. Cody Anderson breezed through the second, getting three quick ground ball outs, but the leadoff walk here in the third has come around the score to give Toronto a two to nothing advantage. Old foul. Another change up, and you see that ball. You got to get that change up down, down in the zone. He's left a couple up that he's been able to get away with. Way outside. Two balls, two strikes. And out goes Jan Gomes. Told you it's a human night, and I, I he is working up one serious yeah, lather out it's, there it's, on the mound. His hat is drenched. Yes, it is. Look at that. I'm sure maybe he dunked some of that water in between innings, but. At least I hope that's the case. No, I, that's just intensity. Right at Lindor. Go. He'll go to second to end the inning. Blue Jays get a run. And after three, they lead the Indians two to nothing.
NFL at Sugardale Dollar Dog Night on September 11th when the Indians return home. That'll be a Friday. They will play the Detroit Tigers. Post game fireworks show are presented by Wayside Furniture. It'll be the second to last homestand of the year. So come on out. Check uh, Indians.com for the tickets. Francisco Lindor fly to left his only time up Marco Estrada has only yielded one hit so far he has kept them off balance with his blend of off speed pitches right back up the middle will it get through no it's cut off by Tulowitzki and he unloads in a hurry he's got one of the best arms in the game at the shortstop position. He's one of the few guys. I mean, he's always on the run when he's making a throw as well. I mean, you watch him taking ground balls here before a game, and he'll make throws to first, and he's always moving. So this is his comfort zone. He can throw on the run with the best of them. Accurate, too. Yeah. That brings up Michael Brantley. Slide to center in the first. Brantley hitting 416 in his last 22 games. You know, they were talking about the kind of month that uh, Encarnacion had as far as, you know, the extra base hits, the home runs, his average. Well, his average is great, too, but you know what? Brantley's ahead of him. He was a bubble. Yeah. When you talk from the All Star break or for the month of August. Of course, the power numbers weren't there, but I'll tell you what, Michael's. Get the tabby right next door. Pat yeah, Tabler. yeah, he's got a 463 in the month of August. Holy smokes! Brantley shoots one to deep right it. field. Back is Batista. He's out of room. It's out of here. He got Michael it. Michael Brantley, home run number 12, and the tribe gets on the board here in the fourth. And cuts the Blue Jay lead in half. It's the 16th home run allowed by Estrada this year. You heard us talk about his power numbers, but he's getting them up there. That's number 12. Cuts the lead in half with one swing of the bat. See if it was a high fastball. Yeah, he tried to sneak it uh, inside on him, and they not going to work. Brantley makes it a two to one game. Into the Indians bullpen. 16th home run allowed by Estrada. Santana shoots one on the ground. Goins with the shift on. Makes the long throw. Two down. We're back on the road to glory for week two of the high school football season. It's a county showdown this week when Elyria takes on Lorraine. Elyria blew out Avon Lake in week one, 31 to 7. Lorraine was shut out by Midview 28 to nothing. Jeff Phelps, Frank Stams, Ryan Cavanaugh have the action Friday night at 11 on Sports Time Ohio. Monty Chisinau takes a strike at the knees. Monty fouled out in the second inning. Fouls that one back out of play. The 0 2 pitch. They want it up high. It's it's up there all right. Now Estrada's 1 2 pitch. Lonnie following it back. Piece of that change up, yeah, following it stay back. Stay alive, stay alive. Pulls it behind the bag. Smoke will take it himself. 
Michael Brantley gets the Indians on the board. Two to one, Toronto, middle of the fourth. It's time now to tweet your strongest fan photo to us using the hashtag STO Data Strong Fan for a chance to have one of your photos shown during an upcoming telecast. It's all brought to you by T Mobile. Bottom of the fourth, 2 1 ball game. Toronto on top. Justin Smoke, Deanna Navarro, Kevin Pillar do up. These are the three hitters that Cody Anderson retired on three quick ground balls back in the second inning. First pitch strike. Smoke grounded out on the first pitch he saw in the third inning or in the second inning. Might have taken issue with that call from Jerry Meals. Oh, what a curveball. Well, he hasn't thrown that. Like that it. was a beauty. Yes, it was. That's the pitch he can break out of there now, maybe. Just show it. Let's go. That's a beauty. Just throw it for a strike. They haven't seen it yet. Right off the end of the bat. And Santana will take it himself. One away. Our great clip of the game from last night, Danny Salazar. He had a wicked changeup working. Seven innings of work. He struck out ten Blue Jay batters. And would you say, uh, Brooke Jacoby, their hitting coach for the Toronto Blue Jays? Those guys thought it was what? Splitter. Well, he told me today, he goes, man, that's a, some kind of a splitter. I said, well, yeah, it's actually a changeup. He said, well, he goes, I, we've never seen one that goes three different directions. Well, he holds it like a splitter, and as we say, sometimes it is difficult for us, and we watch a pitch yeah. every five days, to tell because it'll go different directions he, depending on the pressure of the fingers. And that's what Jake was saying. It, was, it, it, it may be a changeup, but he said it, the action it has is more like a splitter. Right. I, I understand what he's saying. I, I know exactly because it go it's it's vicious. Occasionally it's just a, the bottom straight falls out of it. Last night we saw it break down and in. We saw it break down and yeah, away. If you go straight down or go either way. And Look at him, he's got his gloves on. He wants to bat. <laughs> it's, it's made no all more the more National League games for you, Danny. <laughs> we saw you hit earlier. It's made all the more effective though because of that. Electrifying fastball that he features. Nice. Swung on and missed with another beautiful curveball. He's breaking that out here in the fourth inning, and he's retired the first two. Smoke and now Navarro. Be our Circle K strikeout. Well, I love this. To the left-handers, you see how out front. That's a third pitch now that he's throwing in this game, and 
I like that a lot right there. Good use of it for the first two times he's used it. Here's Kevin Pilar grounded out his only time up back in the second. You know, it's not that you have to throw it a lot. Foul. The, the thing of that is, is they'll go back and they'll say, well, he threw me a curveball last time. It's in their minds that it can possibly come out at any time. Not that they'll see it again, but it's in there. Is it coincidence or by design that he breaks it out here sort of towards the bottom? I, part I don't of the know. Lineup? That's that's a good question to ask uh, Gomes or Mickey Calloway talking to him in you know in between innings. Go ahead and, and throw it. You're getting down to the you know bottom part of the lineup to the left handers go for it. Lindor throws out Pilar. Jays are out one two three two one Toronto as we go to the fifth. You buy your Northern Ohio Honda dealers by the Cleveland Clinic. Call for an appointment today. And by the game changing all new Ford F 150. The future is tough. Well, the season is winding down, so don't miss the Indians and Tigers on Saturday, September 12th. 10,000 fans are going to get a Terry Francona scooter. That's a bobblehead, and it's courtesy of Meritech. All fans can enjoy the post game fireworks. After the ball game that night, go to Indians.com for your tickets. Drive down a run here in the fifth. Jan Gomes to lead it off. And then Abraham Almonte, followed by Giovanni Urshela. Pops the first pitch up. Shallow right. Goins is out there, and the second baseman has it one away. In game recap brought to you by your Toyota dealers. It's been Sacrifice City for Toronto. Encarnacion drove home Donaldson with a sack fly. And then Batista played it Goins with a sack fly. Tribe's lone run came in the fourth on a solo home run by Michael Brantley, his 12th of the year. Then another well pitched game, much like last night. And to this point, the Indians have. Two hits, the solo shot by Brantley, a base hit by Santana back in the second. Now Monte ends up taking that pitch. Yeah, well, he ball. started him off uh, off speed first time up. He knew he was going to get another one, so just spin on it. And that's low 2 0.
Ball three. Marco Estrada. Falling behind three and oh. And it's high ball four. So a one out walk to Almonte here in the fifth. And that's going to bring up Giovanni Urshela who grounded out his only time up. Urshela looks, it's over the outside corner for a strike going one. Strata came over from the Milwaukee Brewers for Adam Lynn in December. And he's quick to home plate, so he's going to be a tough guy to even think about running on. Pretty quick move to first base right there. Now Gio's coming off a tough month. Batted just 179 in August. Takes it slowing away. One ball, one strike. Blue Jay manager John Gibbons pensively looking on. It's a 2 1 Toronto lead, but the Indians trying to make something happen here in the fifth. Runner goes, and the 1 1 pitch hit in the air to right. Over near the line, Batista makes the catch just inside the line. Route number two. Well, Tito started uh, Almonte right there, and I like it. Urshela though hit this ball in the air. It was a fair ball. So they have to retreat and go back, and that's two outs now. And up comes Jose Ramirez, who fly to left. His only time up in the third. Strike one to the outside corner. Ramirez lines it into center field, and Almonte will stop at second. He smashed it right yeah, back up. Yeah, he did. It looked like he left him a changeup upstairs. It was an off-speed pitch about belt high, and he took advantage of it like he should. There it is, right up and out over the plate. That's like batting practice there. And he's lucky to get out of the way. That's what happens. You leave a pitch up. So they have a man in scoring position now with two outs. I told you before, 12 straight games they've scored a run with two outs in their last 12 games. Yeah. So. Now would be a great time to tie the ball game up with a base hit here. Jason Kipnis on the air is batting 317 with runners in scoring position. Strata falls behind him 2 yeah, 0. Starting to get a little bit erratic now with the fastball. It was a four pitch walk to El Monte. 
then uh, he started the runner. Urshela popped up, but Ramirez had a high change up to keep the inning going. Kipnis in the driver's seat and a 2 0 count. It's all right. Take it. 2 0 change up. Didn't like it. He did not like it. Strada taking a long time now. He comes set with two on and two out. And a 2 1 pitch. Up and away. Yeah, there's the fastball again. You know, we, we heard he's got a very good curveball. I saw a couple early. Haven't seen a lot of curveballs from him. Maybe because he doesn't have a feel for it or command for it. So he's primarily been a fastball changeup guy through the first five innings. Well, it's I'm really curious to see what. Navarro wants him to throw here. Well, he's, he doesn't shake him off. He threw the 2 0 changeup, so let's see if he comes 3 1 changeup. There he did. Popped him up, but it's you know, fouling out of play. That to me is that he hasn't been able to command his fastball recently. So I would say that's what, if I was a hitter, you'd be looking for. And don't, it wouldn't surprise me to come back with a 3 2 changeup. Hitters get geared up and they get in the hitters count. So, you know, they almost they don't want to get beat by a fastball. Yeah. Yep. You know, that's just the intelligence or the mentality of a hitter. So you get geared up and you, you just want to get out there and hit it. And the slower the better sometimes when you get into these situations. Two on, two out. Runners go on the three-two pitch to Kipnis. Helped him out. Swung at ball four. Second strikeout of the night for Estrada. 2 1 Toronto, middle of the fifth. Two on Toronto, bottom of the fifth inning. Ryan Goins, the number nine hitter, Ben Revere, and Josh Donaldson do up for the Jays. Goins walked and scored what is right now the difference in the game in the third inning. For Anderson, it's been an oddly symmetrical affair to this point. He faced Five batters in the first, three in the second. And then he faced six batters in the third, so once again he only had to face three in the fourth. Well, both times it was the uh, six, seven, and eight hitters. He had the yeah. one, two, three innings. This is the guy you want to keep off base. 
Otherwise, he is the proverbial fly in the ointment. Yeah, you know, because you get up and you turn that lineup over, and then things yeah. start happening. And when you're hitting number nine in this lineup, you know you're going to get something hit. Normally, you don't want to walk the guy, although he did the first time. There you go. Hard ground ball. Ramirez diving stop. Can he throw him out? He does. Wow. A sensational diving effort by Jose Ramirez, and then still had the wherewithal to get up and make a perfect throw to Santana to get him. How about the range of Ramirez right there? This is going to be our McDonald's. I'm loving it. Look at where he's playing. He's playing him up the middle. This ball is into the hole, and he tracks it down. That ball is by him to get up and make a good throw. That is a tremendous play right there. I think Goins couldn't wow. believe it. Wow. I couldn't believe it. I thought it was a base hit all the way. He makes that lunge to first base and he just smothered that ball. That's a, a terrific play. And you keep the leadoff man aboard. I love how he got up, fired it, and the momentum of his throw knocked him back down again. That's just quick feet, uh, you know, quick to get up off the, t uh, off the carpet, get rid of it. Really a good play. Ben Revere looks at a ball down low, 2 0. Play. And it's two and one. Revere grounded to first in the first. And they lined a single to right field in the third. And that was off the end of the bat. Not hard hit. And that enabled Goins to go all the way from first to third. And he would come home on a sack fly. Two balls, two strikes on Revere. Tried to get him to chase the changeup, he would not, and a full count. Field near the yeah, line, out know. of play. Brantley gave it a long look, but ran out of room. A three two. By Anderson, but Ramirez is there. And he'll throw him out. Two down. Cody Anderson tonight, you see good movement on a number of his pitches. Fastball's going away. He's had a good changeup. He's dropped in a couple of curveballs as well to the left handers. Toronto's got on the board with a couple of sacrifice flies. Josh Donaldson. Fouls one out of play to the right. I want to take a moment to send out deepest condolences to the family of Jeffrey Fowler in Elyria, Ohio, who passed away suddenly at the age of just 31. Huge Indians fan, and he will be missed by it. Friends and family dearly. Thoughts and prayers are with you. Yeah. To third. Good inning. Urshela. Long throw across, right on the money. Boy, Cody Anderson has been impressive tonight. Five innings in the books. Toronto two. Cleveland one.
Time now to reveal our T-Mobile STO Data Strong fan photo of the game. And remember, you can tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STO Data Strong Fan to have a chance for one of your pictures to be shown during an upcoming telecast courtesy of T-Mobile. For Cleveland here in the sixth inning, Francisco Lindor, Michael Brantley, and Carlos Santana do up. Lindor, 0 for 2, robbed of a hit his last time up on a terrific play by his counterpart, Troy Tulowitzki. Pops it sky high. Shallow left. Tulowitzki is out. Falls for it. And makes the catch. Time for a Mazda game break. Here's Al Pulowski. Boy, Al, it's hard to comprehend what's happened to Baltimore. They've lost five in a row, nine out of ten. With that lineup and well, the pitching, I think, is there that's been their problem. They've had some issues with their starters. You know, you, you can give them six innings, Buck can handle that bullpen, but it's just been a tough go for them. Yeah, it just seemed like yesterday they were there were ten games over. stringing together back to back walk off wins and well, they were in the hunt for the playoffs, but they've fallen off the uh, the map. Game and a half back of Cleveland now in the wild card standings. And it was a little cutter there to Michael, but in his last at bat, he got something inside to his liking and gave it a ride. His 12th home run. That cut the lead in half. That's where we stand right now after five innings. It's a two to one Toronto lead. No, I give a straw to credit. He wasn't afraid to go back in there. No, yeah, I mean, that's exactly where you want to pitch Brantley if you can get it in. He's such a good hitter. Came back in there again, and Michael digs it out. Boy, did he ever. You know, I'll tell you what, a lot of times when you're a hitter, if you hit a pitch out of the ballpark off a pitcher, you'll think he's not going to throw it to me again. He came back in there twice and had yeah. at bat. But give Brantley credit, man. He digs it out. That's down and in. I mean, that's not an easy pitch to hit. It got down a little on the trademark, but he found a way to place it between first and second. He's two for three now. Funny how you know I'm not sure it's a pitch a lot of right-handers would even want to swing at, but lefties they they thrive on that pitch a lot of times. Now you keep it down, and it seems like their their swing their, their plane is just yeah. that their barrel head gets right down to it in a hurry. Carlos Santana one out of two. He singled back in the second and he grounded out his last time up. And he takes low ball one. Yeah, after Brantley hit the home run, he came out and swung at the first pitch. So he takes one here. And I thought the pitch he swung at, even though it was the first pitch, it looked like a good pitch to hit, but he, he might have been trying to do too much with it. Yeah. Carlos has been in a much better place offensively of late with a nine game hitting streak now. Well, we talk about the two out run that they've been on, and Santana's a guy that leads his team in two out RBI. So, you know, the other thing I noticed, Rick. And I don't know if it's just coincidence or if there's something to it. He hasn't been walking as much. He's only had one walk in his last 17 games, but he's getting more hits, driving in more well, runs. I, I like that better. If you're in the number four hall, I'd live rather see you drive in runs and walk. That's my point. You know, there comes a point in time where you're, you know, you're going to get pitched around if you're proving you're driving in runs. Totally understandable. And you have opportunities. And with Brantley swinging the bat, the top three, the way those guys have been hitting, Kipnis, Lindor, Brantley, yes, it is time to drive in some runs. Don't walk. 
Three man shift right side of the infield. Well and away. Well, you can tell for the second night in a row these fans are so bored because the Indians pitching has been so good. They're doing the wave to get the blood flowing. <laughs> They're bored. 41,356, 5,000 fewer than last night. But still a big crowd. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful crowd up here. There aren't many ballparks anymore that hold more than 40,000. Right. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was a, that was a generous token. strike. Yeah, well, that may be the token 3 0 strike. You know, how nice was it after the game last night? You go out onto the streets. That's a, that's a gift. You go out onto the streets, and there's people all over the place for an hour plus after the game. Walking around downtown Toronto. On a Monday night. Tomorrow. Yes. Santana pops it up on a 3 1 pitch. Two down. You know, talking about the atmosphere here yesterday before the game, Jose Bautista was talking about just how you leave here at night and you can't wait to get back here in the morning because of the crowds they've had and how exciting it's been. He goes, most Septembers, he goes, most of us were looking at our own batting averages, trying to figure out when, where we were going to go in the offseason. He goes, now we're racing to get here and can't wait to get these crowds going. And they said it's helped them thus far this season. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, I, I can, you can understand. That's what it's all about, playing meaning, meaningful games in September. Uh, you, you can't wait to get back to the ballpark. It is a lot of fun. And every team wants to play in front of this kind of atmosphere in their home park. Right. And when you win, you get big crowds like this. And the Blue Jays? Well, they haven't had it for years here. 20 years. It's just nice to see here in Toronto when they. You, you go back to their glory years. It was 91, 92, 93. Yeah. They were drawing 4 million people a year. It's just nice to see it back here again. And it's amazing what winning will do. Popped foul ground. Donaldson makes the kick. Tribe can't do anything with a one out single for Brantley here in the sixth. It remains 2 to 1, Toronto. Savings and access to Tribe Rewards. Today's Tribe Rewards TV code is Lofton. Visit Indians.com slash season tickets for complete details. Bottom of the sixth. It remains two to one Toronto. Jose Batista to lead it off. Ball one outside. Pop 
picked him up. Love right it. at home plate. Jan Gomes calls for it. One away. Now the Indians will wrap this series up tomorrow night here in Toronto. Trevor Bauer will go for the tribe. That knuckleballer, R.A. Dickey for Toronto. Alan Jensen start our coverage with Indians Live at 6.30. First pitch at 7 right here on Sports Time Ohio. Rick, I know it's only five and a third innings. But Cody Anderson has really pitched well against the lineup that has just abused pitchers of late. In their last nine games, four times Toronto has scored 12 runs or more. <laughs> 12 or more. Yeah. Well, you know what? He's he's gone about it. He's located very well. Early in the game, he left a few uh, change-ups up in the zone. But you know, to hold this team to just uh, three hits and, and all singles, it's a wonderful job. But he's got to keep it right there. You're going through the heart of the lineup now for the third time. I like the way he pitched this guy last time. At first base open, didn't give in to him, didn't give him anything to hit, and walked him. And, and you know this guy's going to want to swing. He's got a hitting streak on the line at 26 games. Line right caught by a diving Francisco Lindor for out number two. Nice, nice play. Potentially. An odd bit of irony right there. Encarnacion lining out to Lindor. Encarnacion, a native of the Dominican Republic, actually went to Puerto Rico because his dad got a teaching job there. And because he was in Puerto Rico, he was subjected to the Major League draft, the amateur draft. He ended up being a draft pick. Most Dominican players gotcha. just signed with clubs well, did not when they that. become eligible. Uh -huh. But Encarnacion's father went to Puerto Rico as a teacher, and Francisco Lindor's dad coached one of Encarnacion's brothers, younger brothers, from the time he was a T-baller all the way up through, you know, Little League age. Well, can his brother hit like him? <laughs> he can't sign him. <laughs> the two of them were talking before the ball game. And Lindor was telling me that, yeah, he said, my, my dad used to coach his, he said, I think it was his younger brother. No kidding. And then Carnacion, it was, it was funny to see his expression as Lindor was telling him the story. Of course, they were speaking Spanish. I wasn't sure what was going on. <laughs> you were sort of trying to follow. I needed Francisco to be my translator. <laughs> Should have got Murphy obelisk. <laughs> no, he wobbles. <laughs> two down, Troy Tulowitzki, 0 for 2 on the night. He has struck out, bounced into a fielder's choice. The 3-0 pitch. He was swinging 3-0. Sure. Fouled it away. Yeah, uh, you know what? You, you give these guys. They're veteran hitters in this lineup. So give it. You know, let them go ahead. If they like the pitch, swing. If they don't, they've been around long enough. They know they got to keyhole it and, and, and shrink the strike zone. If they like it, get after it. I don't blame them. Hit pretty well. But moving over and back, Almonte going to make the catch. Cody Anderson, 10 in a row, retired by the Indians' right-hander.
you by Kia. Visit MyKiaCleveland.com to learn more. By Levin Mattress, located in all Levin Furniture and freestanding locations. And by AT&T U-verse, has more channels on the go than cable. That was that little ferry that used to be over at our other hotel here that would go over to the island. Well, Jan Gomes, uh, Abraham Almonte, and Giovanni Urshela do up for the tribe. Marco Estrada. He has pitched very well here tonight. He's given up just one run. It was a home run by Michael Brantley. I mean, both guys locked in just as we had last night. Two completely different style pitchers from what All we right. saw last night. Yeah. Both effective here this evening. Well, they have their bullpen up and, uh, and going, and I think Cody Anderson's going to be done for the night after his six innings, but it was a, a good one. Let's see if they can get him something to get him off the hook. That's that high fastball he likes to throw up. Upstairs, get you to swing at it. It's out of the zone. And even though it's 87 88, you're looking at everything else off speed down in the zone, so it's easy to chase. Outside, he missed. I'm sure the leash will be short with Estrada in this inning. Callaway got to be thrilled the way that Anderson pitched tonight. No doubt. Gomes socks one deep Boy, center. Yeah, yeah. Back is Pilar looking up. Gone to Souvenir City. <laughs> Jan Gomes, the former Blue Jay, blasts one to straightaway center, and we are tied at two. Well, he got the big man off the hook right there. Parasola home run. So Gomes, I mean, he stayed on this ball and shot it to right center. The ball jumped off his bat. That went to the big part of the ballpark, and there you go, folks. Tie ball game. See that one leaked back over the plate. Stayed about middle, and uh, Jan Gomes made him pay. That's home run number 10 for Gomes. Abraham Almonte taking, and it's a called strike. Seven of his ten home runs, Rick, have come from the seventh inning. Well, on, that's so. a great timing right there. Nobody's more appreciative than that guy sitting on a pitch that pitched the first six for him. Now get one more and give him a chance for a W. Yeah, these pitchers, it's really, this has been another very good baseball game. Breaking ball hit towards first. See, you haven't seen many curveballs lately. One away. Check out the swing and where this uh, pitch comes back. Leaks back over the plate, and boy, he stayed down on a good swing. His head's right there. He's following it all the way through to the zone where it went. Boy, is it? Did he ever? I mean, that was. Really good look. Yeah, it was that angle right there. You, you can see your head. boy where that head was done, and he was just following it straight through the target. It's like a golf swing. You hit it, boom, you stay right there and go straight through to your target. Great follow through, great. Giovanni Urshela 0 for 2 tonight. Fouled one back. Here's another guy that could get. In the seventh inning on his head. He did when he first came up success. Yeah. Weird bounce to third. Donaldson waits back and got him by a whisker at first. Uh, he had to wait back for the second half because he was playing back behind the bag. And even though you don't want to, he wanted to come in. He was hoping that ball would get to him in a hurry. Watch how he gets down. 
so he can see where that ball is going to hop and see how high it is and he's ready to throw it as soon as he gets it and it becomes a nice play. That's one of those hops too where he's probably at third he knows if he's got a faster runner he's asked to charge that play. Yeah that was a, a tweener right there tough to read. Two down for Jose Ramirez. Takes a strike. Boy, Minnesota's already put four runs on the board against Chris Sale they beat in the first so they, three they innings. Whipped them a couple times this year. Hard to figure. Well, it is, but they they've done it a number of times. They're looking to do it for the third straight time. They must know something. Tampa Bay land waste to Baltimore, eight nothing over the Orioles in the fifth. He was, he's one and three with a 6.46 against Chicago. This year. <laughs> In the division, you never know. I mean, against Minnesota. Now one two to Ramirez in the dirt. We had him uh, his number in 2013. Yeah. That year we beat him four times. That happens sometimes. Two two count. Two two score. Ramirez pulls it foul. Two down, two two pitch. Round ball towards short to Lewitsky. Throws it out. Ends the inning. But the Jan Gomes big blow to deep center ties the game at two. And the seventh inning stretch is brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. Two two and as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning we have our Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen. Ryan Webb coming on for the Indians making his 33rd appearance this year. One and with a 2.74 ERA opposition hitting just 233 against him. And he'll be facing the six seven and eight hitters for Toronto. This part of the lineup went 0 for six tonight against Cody Anderson. Well, those were his one, two, three innings. And he had uh, one more in his last one. So it was. Well, he's uh, retired the last 10 in a row. Yeah, I mean, he's. 
did a wonderful job. 11 ground ball outs, five in the air, two strikeouts. Now you get a ground ball specialist in Ryan Webb. Well, like you mentioned yesterday, we had a couple of power pitchers going at it out there. Today, we got a couple of guys pitching a contact mm -hmm. going at it. And then both have done well. I mean, both nights have been really good ball games, no matter how you look at it. Popped up foul out of play. You're right, Rick. I mean, think about this. Last night, Price and Salazar each went seven, combined for 19 strikeouts. Cody Anderson, Marco Estrada. Cody went six, Estrada goes seven. They each struck out two. Yeah. But they <laughs> they pitched. They pitched well and they yes. know, it's a two two game. They pitched, they've given up less hits. There's only eight hits in the ball game. Toronto on a pair of sacrifice flies. The Indians on a couple of solo home runs. Slicing out of play. Oh, and two to count on Justin Smoke. Close. Just missing, and it's one and two. Gonna take a shot at trying to throw that good sinker inside. Not a bad pitch. But you see, that's where Jerry Meal sits, right on that inside corner. So he's got a bird's eye view. That's where Gomes wanted that. Down two and two. Still has the the shift on for smoke. Right on the right side. Again, he lays off inside. Full count. Deanna Navarro waiting on deck. Promised earlier, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. You said it, Rick. Pitch to contact. Yeah, and that's exactly what he did. I mean, he he reeled it in. He had good movement on some pitches. Early, he left a few changeups up, but he settled down. And I think once he got through those first couple innings, he really uh, relaxed, made some quality pitches, kept them swinging the bat, kept them in the ballpark, did a wonderful job tonight for the Indians to keep them in the ball game, and left it when it was tied 2-2. Dalton Pompey comes in as a pinch runner right now for Justin Smoke. Pompey obviously has better speed than Smoke. Well, yeah, you get to September, you have a few extra guys. This guy was just called up today, so go ahead. You've got a chance. It's late in the ball game. Not that they're going to bunt in this situation. Navarro waiting the pitch and lifts one in the air to left field. Brantley coming in. He's there. Makes the catch. One down. Well, KeyBank Kids tickets start at just $15 for kids 12 and under with the purchase of an adult ticket. And kids tickets are located in the family deck out of Progressive Field, home to the expanded Kids Clubhouse. The offer is available only at Indians.com. With one out, Kevin Pilar 0 for 2 to the plate.
Runner goes. Pitch is high. Throw down. Not in time. Bump pitting. Well, they terrific gave, speed. Yeah, they gave him an, an opportunity to run there, and he certainly did. He had a good jump. Yeah, I didn't think there was much Jan Gomes could do about that one. No, there wasn't. I thought there could be something happening as far as the hit and run, but you can see where Pilar was just taking all the way, giving Pape a chance to steal the base, and he does. That's why you pinch run for him. Got a guy with some speed. It's nice to have. So he is in scoring position now with one out. And Pilar thinking about a bunt, but that was a bunt. You got a good chance to drive him in. Well, we already saw a strange bunt back in the third inning by Josh Donaldson. He's the only man in baseball with over 100 runs driven in this year. And with two men on base, one of them at third, he he bunted and was credited with a sacrifice when he moved a guy from first to second. That, that was a strange one. I'll tell you, that was a, a big key in the game, I think. Yeah. He goes for third. Gomes can't get the throw off. Well, that's not the catcher's fault. That's Webb's fault. You've got to do a better job of holding that guy. He's got the big leg kick, and he was off and running. Gomes didn't even offer a throw. And with one out, and you can see where Ramirez is at. He, he's keeping him close, but the big slow kick by Webb, and it's back. And he steals second, steals third. Now the Indians have to bring their infield in. The speed of Pompey has set up Toronto for a chance to take the lead. And a 2 1 count on Kevin Pilar. Urshela is literally on the bag at third. Now he moves into position. Center field caught. Tagging and scoring is Pompey, and the Blue Jays regain the lead. Well, they manufacture a run from the leadoff walk. And it's their third sacrifice fly of the game. That's how they've scored each and every run. But the leadoff walk to Smoke steals second with the pinch runner, steals third, the sacrifice fly. They retake the lead. Wow. Speed does indeed kill. It certainly did in this inning. And so do leadoff walks. Two of them tonight, both have scored. Ramirez, off balance throw. Inning over. Seven complete. The Indians will have to try and come from behind, down three to two.
Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Indians Live presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care with Alan Jensen. Coming up next here on Sports Time Ohio. Will they be talking about yet another come from behind win for Cleveland? Or will they be talking about a heartbreaking loss? We'll see how it unfolds. Aaron Sanchez comes on here to pitch the eighth for the Blue Jays. Top of the order. Do for Cleveland. You know, here's a young man that uh, earlier in the year was in the starting rotation. Matter of fact, he even beat the Indians back on May 2nd in Cleveland. 11 4 game, he was matched up against Kluber, but now since coming out of the bullpen, he's got a great arm. 41 Chris games as takes a over at first base. A 111 ERA. And Estrada now is in line for the win. Kipnis takes a strike over the outside corner. Aaron Sanchez had been a starter his entire career until he got to the big leagues last year. And Toronto used him out of the bullpen 24 times. To a 1.09 ERA, my yeah. yeah, I know it. He's and got the long arms and legs. They probably said, hmm. <laughs> We've got a reliever here. Well, he can go rear it back and throw it hard, and you know, you, you're not going to go through the lineup more than once. Long legs. And a 97 mile an hour fastball. He was the 34th overall pick in the 2010 draft out of Barstow High School in California. Kipnis right back to him. One away. College football returns to Fox and Fox Sports 1. Thursday night, it's former Michigan quarterback Jim Harbaugh. His Wolverines take on the Utah Utes, and the only place you'll see it is on Fox Sports 1 while streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Francisco Lindor 0 for 3 on the night. It must have been something to watch in high school. When he was at Barstow High his senior year, he struck out 104 batters in 57 innings at an 0.73 ERA, <laughs> and he hit 400 with five home runs. He had all state, three states. <laughs> Well, it's free and easy. Yeah. And, and you know, it's upper 90s. It doesn't look like there's a lot of effort, so that ball's got to get on you in a hurry if you're the hitter. And it looks like it has a little movement to it as well. That was really interesting. I couldn't tell if Navarro was trying to signal Sanchez or if he was talking to his third baseman, Donaldson. With all that, all that left field with too. his glove, could have been Revere maybe yeah. coming in. I don't know. He wants to smother Lindor with this pitch, but it came back over the plate, and Francisco plugs the gap in left center field. Pilar cuts it off with a backhand. Here's the throw. Lindor slide. He's out. Of no, a safe call. Wow. And I'll tell you what. Lindor looked like he thought he missed him. He got up there very emotional. 
Gibbons is out of the dugout. He already said check it. <laughs> he didn't even go to the replay. Check it. <laughs> well, this is a huge potential play right here. Yes, it game. is. I'll tell you what. When he got over to cut it off, I, I, I figured Lindor would stop. But he didn't. He missed his location. The ball beats him. But he never tagged he him. He did. I'll tell you what. He pulled the right arm away. He, get, he was safe. Slide he was safe. By Lindor. It really was. He went in with the left arm and pulled back the right. And there's the bag that he has. And then his feet are on it. That's a great call. And you know what? Great job by Clint Fagan. He stayed with the play. Yeah, I'll tell you what. That's really a great slide. And I give the umpire credit. The young umpire. They think they tagged him. He didn't tag him. He was safe. They see it up on the scoreboard. All the Indians are high five. Showing them the, the view from center where you well, can't here you tell. Go. Here's, here's the, the this here's is the, the angle look. that kills you right here. Right here, you look down. He puts the glove right at the base, and then he's going for his right arm, and he pulls it back and out of the way. And look at the left hand on the bag. Oh, beautiful! By the time he tagged him, he had the base. That's going to be a double. Look at the emotion. There's no he way plays they can with. overturn that. I mean, we've seen it at every angle, and I know the the, the crowd. They're looking at it. Like, show me this again. They want to see it on the big scoreboard. They haven't board. shown the angle that we've been showing, have they, on the scoreboard? No, I don't think so. That's because they don't want to show it because they know they're wrong. <laughs> Here it is. Let them freeze it. Look at the left hand hits the base. He still hasn't made contact with him, and as he, he continues, to, yeah, he slays. Great call, double, great slide. Terrific so hustle. What looks like an out because the ball beats you, and, 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 and the call is confirmed. It's beautiful. Pete Walker, pitching coach, goes out to talk now with Sanchez. I find it a little funny how fast that. Gibbons came out to challenge that. You know, because there wasn't enough time to look at it. You know, a couple of different times, but he did, and he thought uh, he was right. Well, I I'm, saw the emotion from Lindor, is what sort of told me that he didn't tag him. I'm sure he's thinking, because it's the same thing I was thinking the ball beat him there. Yeah. The gloves down right in front of the bag, and they go, oh man, he's out. It used to be. Ball beats you, you're out for the most part. You didn't have to apply the tag. Exactly, that's a good point. Now that you have replay, they have to maintain the tag. And the umpires are doing a better job yes, of staying are. with the call all the way through the play. Yes, they are. Well, that's a turns out could be potentially a gigantic play for the Indians. We'll see what happens now. Michael Brantley is already two for three tonight. He's the man you want up in this situation. Just sure as is. last night, Brooke Jacoby told me today, hey, we had the right guy up in the in the game last night with two on and two out in the bottom of the night. Josh Donaldson's at the plate. He goes, that's the guy yeah, we wanted there. That's the guy you'll pick. And, and this and, is the guy you're going to take at the Indians to drive you in a run when needed. He went right ahead and then got ahead of him a one. But it's funny. We'll see how they go ahead and pitch him. Chop to short to Lewitsky. Off balance throw on the money. Doesn't matter where he throws from, what angle, what body position, the ball ends up right in the first baseman's mitt every time. It's a big second out for Toronto. Watch the kind of a buggy whip action he gets on this throw. Yeah, he throws boom underhand, and it's right there. Well, that's how he takes grounders before the game starts. You see him do it all day, so creature a habit. Well, interesting. Troy Chilowitzki, they don't shift for Santana. They keep Goins out there deep in shallow right, but Chilowitzki goes back over on the shortstop side of the bag at second. Maybe because this guy throws so hard, he's got that movement going away that yeah. you, you figure he's going to hit it off the end of the bat. You see where Brantley hit it. This guy is, uh, he's got a special arm. Missed inside, it's 2 0. Oh. That's how Lindor got his hit. They wanted that ball in, he got it up, and it, it, it went back out over the plate. He gave Francisco a little swing in room. 
drive down a run, but the tying run just 90 feet away. This pitch was 97 miles an hour and watch the movie. Yeah, that's not straight though. Away. Look at it going down, down and away. That's like a, a 97 mile an hour sinker. That's unbelievable. Tough to center. 2 1 pitch. Santana on the ground to first. Palabello takes it himself. A one out double by Lindor, but the Indians can't get him home. Blue Jays lead it three to two, middle of the eighth. Three two Toronto bottom of the eighth inning and a new pitcher for Cleveland Jeff Manship will come on making his 21st appearance 142 ERA 169 batting average against he's got the top of the order Revere Donaldson Batista. Tell you what, these first two games have been <laughs> fun to watch, haven't yeah, they? they I mean, yes, they have. The, the players are been a treat. Given great effort, a lot of emotion. You can tell how badly each team wants it. This is fun. This is only the first day of September. One ball, one strike. Slowly chopped, it's going to go foul. Roberto Osuno getting loose in the Toronto pin. Since becoming the closer, he has not blown a save. And the Indians will be sending up Chisholm, Hall, Gomes, and Almonte. The key now is for Manship to. Wow, how about Louis Rivera? Wow. He's still got the hops down there at the third base coaching spot. Get out of the way, Louis. <laughs> there you go. That'll keep you loose. Paying attention. Oh, yeah. He got up early. He may visit the trainer at the <laughs> I was end. He's going to say, a lot of hammy. He's starting to feel it now. The one, two. 
Swung on and missed. Manship strikes him out. One away. I don't know if you read the local paper today. I did not. But uh, they had a really good story about third base coaches, in particularly in the American League East. Okay. You've got Fenway Park to deal with. Right. You've got you know, Yankee Stadium, um, Tampa, 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 Baltimore, Baltimore. Just some of the nuances, and in this ballpark, and and Louis was quoted in the story saying, "I, I kind of have a pretty good feel for how the ball plays on the turf here," and he said, "You know, I'm going to use that to my advantage. I'm not going to divulge any secrets, but." You know, he's got a feel for when a ball is hit, what it's going to do, how it's going to react when it hits the turf. So it might give him a little bit of an edge when to send a runner, when to hold a runner. Well, I'm sure it is. When you play here for, you're going to play here 80 times a year. You hit fungos out there on that turf every day. You know, you watch yeah. batting practice. You watch how the ball is. It's certainly an advantage to a, to their team when the team comes in and hasn't played on. 1-1 one, one pitch, swung out and missed. Now, when you played on turf, it was AstroTurf. Right. Ball seemed to scoot when it would hit the gaps. On this turf, they feel like the ball almost slows down because it's got a little bit of a it's shag. It's like grass it. out yeah. there. When you go out and stand on it, and the track that goes around there, I mean, it is. It's a lot longer than I thought it would be. So I can see how you say it would slow it down. Good pitch to Donaldson, but just missing two and two. And, of course, Fenway Park, that left field wall makes coaching third base an adventure for everybody. Well, yeah, man, that's the, the toughest thing for me about coach at third is you've got to have honest effort from guys every day. Good pitch, rings him up. Manship has struck out the first two here in the eighth. Donaldson not happy, but Jerry Meals punches him out two away. Well, check out the location right here. Outside edge, it stays right there. I like it. Good pitch. You get the call. You know, I guess you're not allowed to ring up their MVP here. <laughs> you get upset. That's like that any any place you go. You don't want your best player getting rung up on strikes. You want to see him hit. That oh. was a great pitch. Jose Batista takes a strike. Tell you what, Jeff Manship is a strike throwing machine. Nine out of 12. And we're talking about the big boys of the Blue Jay lineup here. Just off the outside corner. I'm amazed at how Donaldson, Batista, and Encarnacion, I mean, they take balls that are literally the width of a baseball off the plate. They don't, doesn't seem like they chase many bad ones. I see those pitches a lot. <laughs> well, especially when there's nobody on base. RBI situations, we saw Batista. He'll expand his zone to get that RBI. That one nailed home plate umpire Jerry Meals on the foul back. I think it got him right in the middle of the chest protector. That's the breaking ball. Oh, no, on and the shoulder. The ricochet. Off Gomes' mask. I caught him right on the shoulder. Two two. Well, this crowd wants to see uh, Bautista get on, so Encarnacion has a crack at keeping the hitting streak going. Or he may not get another chance. The payoff pitch. Hit on the ground to short. Lindor with a big hop will set and throw. And Santana digs it out at first to end the inning. So Jeff Manship does his job. Now it's up to the Indians' bats to try and deliver.
All right, thanks, Al. We go now to the ninth, and Roberto Osuna on to try and close it out for the Blue Jays. The one blown save he had came when he was not in the closer's role. You can get a blown save if you cough up a lead late in the game, but he's been perfect since they put him in that closer spot. Lonnie Chisholm lets it rip, and it's over one. Osuna has grown up around the game of baseball. His uncle, Antonio Osuna, spent 11 years in the big leagues as a bullpen guy. His dad pitched in Mexico. So it's a young man who has pretty good poise in addition to a really good arm. Mid 90s fastball. Idea too about this young man, his poise. So in 2010, he pitched for Mexico at the Pan Am 16 and under games. Afterward, he signed with the Mexico City Red Devils of the Mexican League and made his pro debut when he was 15 years old. Oh, well, maybe you were meant to be. <laughs> the one two. Good eye by Chisnall. There's the breaking ball in the dirt. I'm not sure if that's a split or a changeup because it had pretty good downward movement going and it was 83. And he's throwing 96, so 13 miles an hour off of a changeup. The 2 2. When he was starting, he had a breaking ball and a changeup. Usually, you, you kind of go two pitches as a closer. Sometimes they'll have a third. But. Really, no need to it if you got a feel for that fastball. I guess you could throw one, but. Roberto Osuna. Facing Lonnie Chisinau to start the ninth. And a three ball two strike count for Chisholm Hall. The payoff pitch is fouled away. Good at bat for Lonnie. He spoiled some pretty good ones. And again, it, it's not easy to square up a 97 mile an hour heater. into the bag one away looking back at our keys to the game brought to you by wayside furniture silenced the crowd early well Toronto got out to the early lead but Cody Anderson did a great job of keeping them out of it when he retired the last 10 in a row that he faced and then the uh, the Indians got going with a couple of solo homers to tie the game but can't say enough about how well Cody pitched tonight. It's just been one of those well pitched games on both sides, and right now the difference is the speed of pinch runner Dalton Pompey. Yeah, two leadoff walks came around the score, and the Jays have three sacrifice flies. Down low. Gomes tied it back in the seventh with a home run that led off that inning. Outside, two and zero. Oh. Off 
up high. Three balls, no strike. I'll tell you what, it's pretty impressive how Giannis been able to come up with so many big hits late in games when you look at how overall offensively it's been a down year for him. Well, yeah, it's, you don't know if it's concentration or what. But he's sitting right now. You need a base runner. He'll be taking uh, at least that. We'll see after that strike. Boy, amazing how he just sort of just seemed to reach back. Just I'm going to feather this one in there at 97. Fastball to say he says hit it right there. It's elevated enough. Gomes a good low ball hitter. He elevates it, and it wasn't elevated over the belt. So that just goes to show you how hard he is throwing. Better than 41,000 rising up here in Toronto. The payoff pitch. Gomes sends one to deep center field again. Pilar back. He's on the track at the wall. Goodbye. Gomes has done it again. You Holy Toledo, are you kidding me? He absolutely crushed that ball to straightaway center. Almost Rick, an instant replay of his last home run. It is, and, and this crowd can't believe it, but he got down. Out of, watch where the location of this fastball is. It's down a little bit more. And how about this? This is weird. The Indians, three solo home runs. The Jays, look at that. Fastball was down, and that's pretty much the same spot he hit his last home run. I mean, if you look at both splits, I guarantee that ball was not within two inches away from the last spot he hit it. But boy, did he hit it and tied this ball game up. What a big boost for the tribe. Mr. Clutch. Throw out all those other numbers with Young Holmes from the seventh inning on. He's been Superman. And Roberto Osuna. Suffers his first blown save since he moved into the closer's role. They did that to uh, what's his name with the Yankees, the left hander came out. Andrew Miller. Andrew Miller blew his first save. Almonte pops one up foul out of play. He came off the DL and uh, he was 24 for 24. Let's take a look at this home run. Boom. I mean, you can did hear, you hear the, the crowd, crowd gasp. Yeah. Oh. They knew when it left the bat. And he would have needed a stepping ladder. He would have needed a fire truck to climb up that ladder to go catch that one. Wow, that's the last two swings from Jan Gomes in the seventh and in the ninth. Has tied it up two times. Out of play. One and two to count. How ironic that so far tonight in this game. The Blue Jays with all those big bashers. They have three sack flies. The Indians have three home runs. The one two. Way outside. Crowd a little bit stunned. The 2-2. Oh man, right back into the mask of Navarro. He says he's fine, but oh. yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> What's my name? I'm fine. <laughs> He worked with Mo, Larry, and Curly. I'm fine. <laughs> He's the other fine brother. Now the 2-2. Two -two. Hammered. Almonte driving one up the alley. He's got extra bases and he can fly. Pilar trying to play it off the wall. Almonte, He's going to dig for third. Here's the throw. He is safe. Wow, Almonte nice. in with a one-out triple. Do you know how big that is when you can get to third base? He, that is his fourth triple already. 
when you can get to third base and instead of second with one out, that, I don't know what that was. That, that wasn't was his good breaking fat, ball, that, I think. Okay. Well, that breaking ball stayed out there, and it was nice to hit for Almonte, and he just put his head down and put the pedal to the metal and goes sliding into third and beats it. And that's a nice, that's a big triple. Now they're going to have to bring the infield in. And that's going to give two shots for the Boy, Indians. You got to love the emotion too. These guys are playing with. It's just so much fun to watch when you know what's at stake, how much it means to them, and they're pouring it out here tonight. Another great ball game at the Rogers Center. Watch Here's this the seventh pitch. inning homer. Watch right there. I, I'm telling you, the, the 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 pitch he just hit was in that same spot. Here it is. Almost an instant replay. You're I'm right. Telling you, yeah. it's, it's identical. That's the nitro zone they call that. Well, the Blue Jays bring the infield in. Chris Johnson pinch hitting for Urshela. How do you like that? Off the DL. Here's your first at bat. Win the game, or at least give us the lead. Is what they're saying. Well, uh, you call them up. You put them on the roster. You better be ready. You can see Johnson. Pinch hitter 429, 9 for 21. Boy, this big run out there for the tribe. Get him in. Chased one down low. And it's 0 and 2. Have to be careful here too, just in case there is a pass ball or excuse me, a wild pitch back there. It's not that far behind home plate, and it could ricochet off. So yep. you got to be, yep. you got to be alert if you're on third base. Almonte is that man, the one-two, and a ground ball to second. Now flip it to first, and Almonte stays at third. Two down. Well, give Johnson credit. He put it in play. Tried to find the hole over there on the right side. Almonte was playing a little cat and mouse with Goins. And there are two away. And I'll leave it up to Jose Ramirez, who is one for three on the night. Ball one. This is turned into a 26 pitch inning. Not what he expected. Two to Ramirez. Hammer, right field. Batista will make the catch. Oh, Ramirez gave it a ride, but Batista able to get back and track it down. Jan Gomes, though. Ties it for the second time tonight.
Clint Shaw will be the new pitcher for the Indians. Shaw will face the four, five, and six hitters for Toronto. Encarnacion, Tulowitzki, and Calabello. Go down to Andre to get an update on is Cody Allen available if needed. Cody Allen is available. Tito told me he will not use him like he did last night, though. He says he's available for one inning, and if he uses him tonight, most likely we'll have to get him off the next two days, is what he's planning on. So he won't bring him in in the middle of inning, only if he's here in the close. All right, thanks, Andre. Brian Shaw facing Encarnacion, who is 0 for 1 officially on the night. Swung out and missed. He had a sack fly in the first. He walked in the third. And then he had a line drive that was caught by Lindor in the sixth. His 26 game hitting streak on the line. It didn't look like maybe he'd get an opportunity to extend it. Right. That's but the right. Indians, by virtue of tying the game, prolonged it. Give him another opportunity. It's all right. Give him the opportunity. Last time Lindor. Robbed him of a base hit diving forward. it. On a play to the right. We're in the bottom of the ninth. We are tied at three. Three on the left side playing Encarnacion as a pull hitter. He pops one up, foul ground, Santana. Routine play here, one away. And that will bring up Troy Jolowitzki, who is 0 for 3 on the night. Has struck out, bounced into a fielder's choice, and fly to center. Breaking ball hung up inside. Cutter. Yeah, that ball was off the plate. He stayed on it. Off the end of the bat, but gets a hit. His first tonight. It's only the fourth hit for the Jays all night. That's their first hit since the third inning. Chris Calabello's first at bat tonight. Out of play. Well, he didn't waste any time after sitting on the bench no, most of the night. No, these guys, they they come up to hit. They don't want to. They don't want to see anything. They see the baseball. They get after it. I guess a lot of times they figure, okay, he's going to try and get ahead of me. Well, if he does, let's go. I'm ready for it. To third. Avilas to second. There's one. Ramirez on to first. Double play ends the inning. We've got extras tonight in Toronto. Tied at three.
are presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky all season long. Jack Link's, feed your wild side. Lid open here at the Rogers Center. A warm evening. Another nail biter, white knuckler, 3 3. As we go to the 10th, the Indians tying it twice on solo homers by Jan Gomes. Once in the 7th, and then after the Rej uh, Jays regained the lead, he homered again in the 9th to tie it again. Brett Cecil will face Jason Kipnis, Francisco Lindor, Michael Brantley. And Cecil came on yesterday and pitched the 8th inning and faced the same three guys. He had a 1 2 3 inning. Kipnis is 0 for 4 tonight, 1 out of 8 in the series. His lone hit came yesterday when he let off the game with a double and scored a run. Well, the Indians are 5 and 3 in extra inning ball games this year. The Blue Jays 5 and 5. Toronto's 2 and 1 in extra affairs. The Indians 4 and 3 on the road. That's where the bulk of their. They only have one extra inning game at home this year, and the Indians won that one. Strikes him out. Throw to first. One away. Now he gets a look at that curveball down in the dirt. You bounce it. Get ahead. That's that's the nasty pitch right there, though. To put him away. Curveball. Spun Lindor out of the way. Even the scoreboard behind home plate realizes it's extra innings, and we're feeding the wild side. <laughs> Jack Links. There it is. Lindor takes it's up high two and zero. Oh. Upstairs, three balls, no strikes. Baseball, you see a lot of guys who throw left handed or throw right handed, bat left handed. Occasionally, it's very rare, but every once in a while you'll see a guy who throws left handed and bats That's right, right handed. Yeah. How about the only thing Brett Cecil does left handed is throw a baseball? That is pretty That's weird. Weird, isn't it? Yeah. Finds the strike zone, three and one. Now I've known people that do things like throw right handed but kick a ball left footed which is again odd but I, I've never heard of anything like quite like this. Lindor shoots one right field line that's going to get down. Batista going to try to cut it off he does. But Lindor's headed for second. Here's the throw it's cut off and once I'll again he's got what. himself a hustle double. I'll tell you what this kid breaks out of the batter's box now and he's going to make him throw you out. It was awfully close his last time. He had a beautiful slide, and this time, uh, you know, it's not directly hit at Bautista, so why not? That pitch was elevated. 3 1, he jumped on it, stayed on it, took it down the line. By the time he could get it, he has to turn, spin, throw, and make an accurate throw, and he couldn't do it. Lindor goes into second. Two doubles tonight, and watch him right out of the batter's box. He's thinking, too. He's making the call on his own. He doesn't need help from anybody. There you go. Good hustle, kid. How about both of his doubles, Rick, have been on pitches that were kind of up and away. Yeah. And from each stayed, side of the plate. Yeah. Well, he's identical. I'll tell you, there's no change in him. Doesn't matter what side of the plate he hits from. There's Michael Brantley, two for four tonight. He homered back in the fourth. Right at the third baseman, Donaldson. Two down. Brantley upset with himself as he... Ran past the bag at first. You don't see Michael very often swing at a first pitch, and I don't know 
if he's upset with the pitch that he swung at or the way that he swung at it. Well, sure. if he goes after the first pitch, it had to be the one he was looking for. You know, and maybe that he's just upset at himself that he didn't do more with it because that was the pitch he was looking for. They are going to walk Santana intentionally. That'll give uh, Chisenhall an opportunity unless they're going to pinch it. You got Sands. Ryan Rayburn, Jerry Sands, Roberto right. Perez. That's usually on the bench. how Terry does it. And probably be, here comes Sands. But they do have a right hander low in the bullpen. You know, out of the Indians, nine hits tonight. Six have been extra base hits. The three homers, the triple, the two doubles. And I would expect to see low here once Sands is announced. And there is ball four well, to Santana. Let me see. I'm looking at this card tonight, and the Indians have yet to get their two out RBI that they need to continue to streak. So maybe they have to take it into extra innings tonight to make it 13 in a row. All right. And then it's going to be up to Jerry Sands to do it. And then here comes Gibbons. He's going to make the move to get bring in the right hander. Low. Good fastball. We know he's got a good slider. Well, Rick, it was. Uh, it was Jerry who did it last night. He yeah, had two out RBI right. hit, so why not That's do it right. again? Timeout in Toronto. Tied at three. Three three. We're in the tenth. Two on two out. Last night, Jerry Sands came up in the seventh inning and delivered a big two out RBI single that gave the Indians the lead they would not relinquish. He's got a chance to do it again. Yes, he does. He's going to have to do it off a right hander today, though. Mark Lowe. He pitched for the Indians a few years ago. Good fastball. He, he he found his fastball. He's throwing it in the mid 90s again. I don't know if it's in the Toronto water up here or what. Well, it was last year he pitched with the Indians. This Is it year, last year? Yeah, this year he went to camp with Seattle, made the ball club, regained his fastball, as you pointed out. And outside, I mean, he was a, a slider master when he was with us. It was slider, slider, slider for everything. But for whatever reason, he gained that fastball back. And they acquired him in a trade from Seattle. Chopped right at the shortstop, Tulowitzki. He'll flip it over to first. Jeez, oh and the inning is over. <laughs> No runs a hit, two men left. We'll go to the bottom of the tent.
Here's how Toronto got their three runs tonight, all on sacrifice flies. Encarnacion in the first, Jose Bautista in the second, and then Kevin Pillar in the seventh inning. All three Cleveland runs came on solo home runs. Michael Brantley in the fourth. Jan Gomes in the seventh. And this is not an instant replay, but Jan <laughs> Gomes again in the ninth. Yeah, that ball was about uh, 15 to 20 feet over to the right, a little bit more than his first. That tied the game, put us into extra innings. The Indians had a chance in the top half of the inning, and Shaw's back out there again. Sands remains in right. Deanna Navarro to lead it off. And Shaw's pitch over the outside corner for a strike. Navarro is 0 for 3. He is grounded out, struck out, flyed out. Navarro born in Caracas, Venezuela. Originally signed with the Yankees 15 seasons ago. Hit. Navarro is aboard, and the Blue Jays have the winning run at first here in the tenth. And let's see if we get a pinch runner for him. And we will. Yeah, oh, that's Carrera. Probably right? Ezekiel Carrera, yeah, that's the former Carrera. Indian. Yeah, right, that's Carrera. I can tell by the way he was running out there. Last time the Blue Jays inserted a pinch runner, Dalton Pompey stole second and third. He came home on a sacrifice fly. Kevin Pillar is the batter. Well, he was the batter the last time they uh, reached base, and he took a couple of pitches when they started to steal. Pompey came out. He let him steal second. Shaw pretty quick to the plate, though. He's going to be tough to steal on. He'll give Gomes a much better opportunity than Webb did, that's for sure. Keeping Carrera close at first, or at least trying to wear him down. Side. Kevin Pillar is one of those guys that plays with a chip on his shoulder. And he's not cocky, he's not arrogant, but he plays with a motivation that most guys don't have. He was a 32nd round pick, and he got a thousand bucks for a signing bonus. See, they could uh, try something here. Good count to start your runner. Pillar up can handle the bat. Called time. Well, he was set and he got it. Niels did get put the hands up. He didn't move. He kept his hands up, though. I could hear it. Gomes looking into the dugout to see what they want to do over there. Not much they can do. He needs to throw a strike. Three and oh. Double barrel action in the Indians bullpen. Brian Shaw worked the ninth. He got a double play ball to get out of it. And I think because it went so quickly, that's why Terry Francona figured he could maybe get another inning out of Shaw here. But well, right there, it looked like he rushed because of the base runner over there. He's really trying to get rid of it. He almost balked because he came set and just kept going.
This could certainly be an action pitch. 3 1. Swing and a miss, and a full count. The way he swung at it, it was like an action swing, but the runner was not moving. That was a borderline pitch. That could have been ball four. You got to believe Carrera's going here. He goes and it's fouled back. Well, if he could get one by Pilar here, it could be a strike him out, throw him out. Shaw's 18th pitch since he came into the game. Runner goes. Pilar lifts it to center. Routine. Almonte is under it. One away. Back in the seventh inning, a leadoff walk to Dalton or to Justin Smoke. Then Dalton Pompey came in as a pinch runner, stole second, then promptly stole third. And after a fly ball out, he came home on the Pilar sacrifice. Yeah, that was the second leadoff walk of the game that uh, Toronto came around to score. First one was Goins. This guy back in the third inning was a leadoff walk, and he scored on a sacrifice fly by Bautista. Almost threw it away. Ryan Goins walked in the third and came around to score. Since then, he's grounded out twice to second base. Walk-off win for Toronto here at the Rogers Center. Only the fifth home run of the year for Goins. Not a guy you think of when you talk about the power in this Toronto lineup. But that was a no doubt about it shot to deep right field. Well, it sure was. His first career walk-off. Boy, what a good game this was. Two run homer wins it for Toronto in the bottom of the tenth. Five three is the final. Our Pat O'Brien Chevrolet play of the game. I want to see the pitch. Here it comes. It looked like a breaking ball. Yeah. Stayed middle of the plate. You know he didn't get it in. And it went a long way, and everybody knew it was out of here as soon as he hit it. Well, it turns out to be a five three ball game. I'll tell you what. I can't wait till tomorrow because. 
Whoever wins tomorrow is going to be uh, will win the series. That was a, a, a really good game. Two nights in a row, we have seen really terrific baseball played by both clubs. A lot of emotion. Everybody leaving it on the field in the first two. It has been fun. Heartbreaker for the Indians in the end tonight. Series even at a game apiece. Season series even at three games apiece. 5 3 is the final. And stay with us for Indians Live, presented by Conrad's. Coming up next.